Hello and welcome to Just a Tiny Amount, your channel for all things stop motion. I'm Gordon Craig and I've just finished trying out some walk cycles on the theme punk steamed robot that you might have seen me make in a previous video. In this video I will show you the results of some of those walk cycle tests as well as share with you some of the learnings that I came up with on the way. So one of the first things I discovered when playing around with the puppet is that it can't really support its own weight. Even with all of the joints tightened up as much as really possible, the moment it lifted one foot off the floor, the other leg would sag. So it needed both legs to support its weight. Obviously when it's walking it has to lift at least one leg off the ground, so I put in place some rigging to help support the weight. I did have to sort of move it with every step, so when you watch it back it's sort of dragging this weight behind it, but I'm happy with that just for these tests. The other thing that I was happy to overlook in these tests was essentially the top half of the robot. I'm not really worried about how the arms are moving in a sort of a complementary movement. So I was generally only interested in what was going on below the waist. The robot is articulated so that the top can move sideways. So as the robot's rocking backwards and forwards as it's stepping on each leg, I could keep the top bit level, which I tried to do to some degree. But when you watch it back, you can see there's a, there's a bit of shake going on. So for the first walk cycle, I was just getting used to the basics. I was pleased to discover that the movement and the walk cycle of this robot with the knees coming backwards actually followed the same oh, similar principles to making a human puppet walk. If you haven't seen my video about the walk cycle of a person, you can watch that here. For this first walk cycle, I wanted to keep things simple. So I just started by finding out what the contact positions where the feet all touch the ground and the passing position where the legs cross over in the middle, what they look like, where they should be in the cycle, and what happens in between that. I settled on a six frame walk cycle, so for a 12 frames a second animation that would be two steps every second. So this was from the contact position, two in-betweens up to the passing point, and then two in-betweens to the next contact point. So once I decided on the number of frames per step, I set up a guide in Dragon Frame to make sure I had a nice smooth constant movement across the whole walk. I picked a point on the puppet that I thought was going to be fairly constant in relation to its position with the rest of the robot, and then used this to work out how far it's going to move both horizontally and vertically with each frame. I found it very useful to make sure that that point was in the right place to define where everything else should be. So if it wasn't high enough or it wasn't far enough forwards, I moved the legs and knees and ankles accordingly to get it to the right point, and that generally defined how everything else should move. In saying that, I made sure that all of the limbs were moving through nice smooth arcs, if not necessarily linear motion, but at least a regular and predictable motion. The roles that each of the limbs are doing to make the walk possible is very similar in theory to the way that a human puppet would walk. So the front leg is where the weight is transferred onto, so it goes at a constant speed backwards as the body moves at a constant speed forwards. The height and the position of the robot is generally defined by the front leg. The rear leg, its job is to get the foot from behind it out to in front of it by the time the weight reaches there. How high the rear foot goes as it passes the front foot, it's pretty much down to personal taste. You could have it moving in a very high swooping arc, or you could have it barely clearing the ground. As long as it gets from behind the body to in front in time to take the weight, you're winning. So putting all of that together, my first walk cycle looked like this. As you might see from watching this, the robot actually gets as low as the legs would allow it. So the second walk cycle was better for this. I started at the contact point and made sure that there was a bit more gap between the, the leg and the foot. 
Also in terms of frame choice, I added in one extra frame at the beginning, just an anticipation of lifting the foot off the ground before the rear leg moves forward. Not only was I trying to bring into play the movable toes that I built into the robot, I also wanted to try and give a sense of weight to the movement. So if the robot had to put quite a bit of effort into getting its foot off the ground, but then it landed quite heavily at the end, I was hoping I could convey that in the animation. So adding frames at the beginning when raising the foot, but keeping it quite quick when it comes to placing the foot. It was subtle and I thought I could probably do better. So for the third and final walk cycle, I slowed things down completely, doing a 12 frame walk. So it's doing one step every second. I added most of these frames in before the passing point as the robot is taking its foot off the ground. So it's spending a lot more time pivoting onto the toe before I even unscrew that foot from the stage. The result is a lot more labored walk, as if maybe it's carrying a heavy load or it's old and rusty. One problem was that I actually found the highest point that the robot puppet will move to, which is where the ankle is butt up against the edge of the foot and the knee is at a right angle so I couldn't raise it any higher than that. So there is a sweet spot between the lowest point and the highest point that I'll have to try and keep all of the movement within. All in all, I was really happy with the way that the walk cycles came out. This was an exercise in me getting to know the robot, and I know a lot more about how it moves now what its limitations are and what I can do with it. For future tests, I might try having it walk slightly more towards the camera, maybe not directly on, but maybe at an angle. I think having this set up where I'm just walking sort of horizontally in front of the camera was a bit artificial, not very cinematic. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure you'll be seeing this robot again in future videos, and I would love to know what you'd like me to do with it. Until then, this is just a tiny amount. I'm Gordon Craig, and I shall see you next week.